This is the February Powerful Packs box. And I've been waiting all day to open it, and I'm not gonna wait any longer. So let's get this thing open. Aw, red, the color of love. Oh, nice. What are these? Who knows? A brush marker pro. The color indigo blue. Aw, Karen. So let's see, there's one. So another one. Two, three, four. Whoa, come back. Five, six, and seven. So we have seven of these interesting looking brush markers is what they say. But not just a brush marker. It's a brush marker. Pro. I have never used these before. I say that about everything, but it's true. <laughs> so the colors here are lilac with a K, sapphire blue, apple, cool gray too, indigo blue, turquoise, and canary. Very excited to see how those work. They look like just regular pens, so oh, look at that little brush. I'm gonna be, I'm interested to see if it's like a brush pen or more like a brush marker because it says brush marker. <laughs> we'll find out. There's also two microns in here. Oh, a micron pigma brush. Eh, not a huge fan of those. <laughs> but pigma microns in a 05. Yes, please. And a pigma BB, which I believe is a brush as well. Oh my goodness, we are well taken care of when it comes to brushes. <laughs> my shaky hands are getting nervous. Here we have the list of supplies for the February Premier Pack. It says you can actually mix two colors together by touching the tips for 10 to 30 seconds. The marker on the bottom will temporarily absorb the color of the upper marker. Ooh, that makes me want to cringe a little. <laughs> All right, so these aren't just your ordinary markers, I guess. Like you can actually see, I don't know how well you can see this. Can you notice that on the inside you can actually see the ink? Oh, look at it, there's a bubble. That's pretty cool. I'm excited to swatch these. And then the paper this month looks like Bristol board. That's expensive stuff. That's a big pad, look at that. Look at how many sheets is that? That's 25 sheets? Oh, they must be thick. Canson XL Smooth Bristol, exceptionally smooth service in the color white. Now, since the sheets are so big, I think I will take a piece and cut it so we can swatch on that without wasting a whole sheet of paper. I actually do use a different brand of Bristol board with my Copic markers and I love it. So I wonder if this is just as cool. I bet it, it must be. <laughs> Look, I got a square. <laughs> Now we can swatch on this extra piece of paper. I do have experience with these two, actually these three. So I'll start with those, get that over with. Very hard to get a consistent line with that because it's so squishy. And we have the Sakura Pigma. Are these both Sakura? I just discovered something interesting. <laughs> these are both Pigma, Pigma, and then brushes. I mean, this is called the BB and then that's called the brush. And they're both Sakura, Sakura but they look so different. We'll see how well they work. I'm gonna assume maybe this is a more professional. Yep, oh, look, they just used the word professional over here, yeah. The Pigma Professional brush. And then this is more for enthusiasts, I'm gonna guess. But I like that it's stiffer. So if you have a heavier hand, this is more what you'd be looking for. That actually works a lot better for me. Oh, but then it's harder to get different lines. Interesting. And then a wonderful Pigma Micron. Now this, mmm, yeah, <laughs> that's more my speed. All right, now, <laughs> those are just liner. Let's get into the colors. Actually, what I should do first is write each of the colors down. What should we start with? I'm really excited for this. <laughs> okay, let's see how soft, how squishy, how stiff, how round, all the things. Here we go, start with a little circle. I don't know about these. Am I using like the wrong side of the paper? What these are reminding me of <laughs> are the um, Crayola Signature blending markers. Cause they like beat up the paper a little bit. Let's, let's give them all a little chance here. Okay, this one's not as noticeable, but you can also, what I'm also noticing is there's a lot of like ink coming out. So they're very shiny when you first put down the uh, pigment. It looks like the names are only on the caps, so <laughs> it 
If you don't put the cap on and you mix them up, you're going to get a little confused. Ooh, look at that bright yellow. All right, so I'm not really having the same experience I had with that gray. So what I'm gonna do is take one of these colors that did really well, like the apple or the canary. I'm just gonna keep going over the same spot and see what happens. Is that a hair? Ah! Problems. Okay, do you see how the paper is beating up and creating this like super dark pigmenty barf bits? <laughs> yeah, that's something very similar. Actually, why don't I, I still have those. I can grab them and compare. So these are actually what these pens are reminding me of. These Crayolas. Look, the colors are different. And these have a smell to them. I forgot about that. So it does look like they're working differently. Let me grab like a green. Maybe they're not the same kind of markers. Now that I'm seeing them next to each other, not feeling the same way. No, see these work a little bit more like an alcohol marker. So I'm gonna guess that these are alcohol based. Whereas these are like a paint. What did it say? Maybe I should read more about it. Oh, I'm also noticing the brush marker pros do not bleed through the page, which is schmancy. So they're definitely completely different than these. I could put these away. <laughs> I do have a whole video on these where I draw something out of that thumbnail, if that interests you. <laughs> but I'm in the middle of something. From what I'm reading here, these are actually filled with a type of paint that mimics inks. So I'm guessing that's why I'm getting that, like, uh, problem. <laughs> Ooh, they're still smudgy. Although those are more of an art supply I'm more comfortable with because I've used markers a lot more than I've ever used. Whatever these things are, I don't even really know. <laughs> so there's some kind of like liquidy paint put inside a pen. And so you can use them for calligraphy, graphic design, and illustration, it says. Although I'm seeing a lot of similarity in um, tone here. So using them for illustration might be be a little scary, <laughs> but I do wanna try what it says right here, which is you can apparently mix the colors. So what we should try to do here, if I put like green here and I put yellow here, I should try to do is create a gradient between those two. So you know, what it wants you to do is take a top marker and a bottom marker and touch them together. Oh, I don't like it. I'm having a really hard time keeping them together. For 10 to 30 seconds, the marker at the bottom will temporarily absorb the color of the upper marker. This will allow you to create a smooth transition from one color to another. Hey, look at that. Still looks green on the end though, but it seems to have gotten its color back. Let me see. It's still a little bit green. I don't know how long it's supposed to take. It takes a while. <laughs> so what happens if you like layer them on top of each other? Can you blend that out? I mean, that's a pretty good gradient, but I'm not fond of the texture of these markers, paint things. <laughs> like bits of the paper sort of like peel up. The other thing I'm noticing about these markers is they stay wet for a long time, more like paint than like a actual marker. So if you like touch it, you can smudge it around a bit and it gets all over the place and it gets on your desk. <laughs> so you gotta make sure it's completely dry before you touch anything to it or yourself. <laughs> so these are definitely more on the side of paint versus like inks. But I think we definitely need to try and take advantage of these gradients because that seems to be their kind of like selling quality. <laughs> so I think I want to take advantage of those since that's what we're going to be working with today. So here on our main sheet of paper, now here on our main sheet of papers, we're going to be creating our illustration, but I still need to work out the idea. So I need to do a little bit of sketching here. I'm going to grab just a regular pencil. And I'm gonna start thumbnailing some ideas over here. Since the only thing I have going for me right now is gradients. I'm kinda in the dark for what I wanna draw, so it's going to be pretty difficult to come up with something from nothing. So I'm just gonna start drawing things I like to draw and hopefully get inspired to draw something more original. An idea I kinda just thought of would include an orange, but I don't have any reds to blend with this yellow. Do, 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 do. It lost that yellow real quick. Probably should be doing it this way. Creating a new marker. There we go. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, see how much better that works? Which I guess I should have expected. 
They seem to be a little bit like a chameleon pen. I've never actually used a chameleon pen, so I could be wrong, but this seems to be the way I feel like people have said they work. <laughs> you kind of like connect them together and then they draw one color for a little while and then they become the other color. I'm just gonna keep playing with this and see if I can uh, spark some ideas. Ooh, I like that color. Mixing the apple with the turquoise. But a part of me just wants to like blend it the way you would blend Copics, but you can't do that. It doesn't really work. I think it would, but it's not quite the same thing. You know what? When in doubt, just draw a floaty girl, right? Let's try and fill this square page with just a random girl floating, you know? And then I'll try to incorporate like as many gradients as possible. Gradients are kind of my uh, goal here. Try to incorporate as many of them as possible. Let's try and open the arms so that she's filling the page. You could probably give her those big anime ponytails to really make sure we're filling out that interesting page layout. Mouth. Oh, so happy. <laughs> This may be. Looks like a penguin. <laughs> kind of want to change up this leg. Maybe pull it in. Maybe more like for the knees here. Then the leg comes out this way. Is that cuter? <laughs> I guess I should rephrase that. Does that look better in this scenario? <laughs> oh, what if she's doing like a cute sea leg? Her hands are like this. But then her face would need to be different. Because I don't think she's excited enough to be like, ah. arm the way we had it before. But I'm gonna pull this arm up a bit. More like this. It just adds a little bit more interest. So it's not like as symmetrical as it was before. And then hopefully we can use like that gradient effect for the hair is my plan. <laughs> Since the hair is so long, it might be difficult. But since it takes so long for the ink to kind of switch over, I'm hoping I can take advantage of that for this long section of hair. I feel like there's a lot of space right here in particular. We could add like a little critter, like a little jelly bean animal that like hangs out with her <laughs> with cute round ears. Maybe not. What if it's like reaching up like, yes. And this one's like, oh, it looks like a dab, doesn't it? Okay, maybe the little jelly bean is dabbing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying. <laughs> it's like a mouse or something. <laughs> but maybe it's got a bunny tail. <laughs> it's like a Raichu and Mickey Mouse mixed together. <laughs> How's that? But now I want her to look at her little buddy. So I'm gonna turn her eyes this way. this other ponytail. Hmm. I think I need to think of the hair more as a ribbon. I think that would help get this right because that one how it twists and turns this one was just really flat. So I'm gonna work on this ponytail. I'm gonna think about it as like a ribbon it would be more like that. So then hair strands would interact with it that way. So there's a bit of a tangent happening here, like, and a tangent is when, when two points kind of meet without perfectly intersecting. And so basically this arm is kind of following this exact strand of the hair, and I don't like that. And in turn, that hair is just in that location because of the way the rest is. So I feel like I should just change the whole thing again. It's just not quite appealing. What if I go like way out here? Here. So then we avoid that arm altogether. Ooh, I like that. I think that's better. Yes, I think I like that. Okay. <laughs> so now she just needs some clothes. It's currently below freezing outside. For some reason, I want to draw something super summery. I'm going to draw another one of those little bunny mouse things back here. <laughs> now that I think I know how to draw them. <laughs> They're kind of like bear rabbits too. <laughs> okay, why don't we try and <laughs> split the difference between summer and winter and make kind of like a fall outfit, maybe like a turtleneck. 
with like one of those slip dresses over top of it. That's kind of fashionable, isn't it? <laughs> and then some shoes down here. All right, so that's the sketch for now. <laughs> I feel like I'm, if I work anymore, it'll be that overworked sort of stage. So I'm kind of feeling that happening. So I'm gonna go in with the Pigma 5 and start adding in some lines here permanently. First, I'm going to go over everything and lightly erase it. I have a better idea of what I've already added line art to and what I haven't because sometimes when the pencil's there, I have a hard time seeing where I've put the lines. And I just find that this is more helpful for me. It's so cute. <laughs> I need to give these things names besides Bunny Mouse. That's not actually that bad, but <laughs> I just feel like they deserve something better. There's one ponytail down. <laughs> one more to go. I'm gonna erase some of this pencil that we don't need anymore. See how everything's doing. Careful not to crunch any of the corners of the paper. And I don't want any comments about this section. It never happened. <laughs> we do another bear bunny. Here we go, here we go. This is becoming my favorite part. They're so easy to draw. Funny because they were really difficult to draw when I was trying to figure them out. But now I love them. Now I love them. There he is. So cute. I never have much to say when I'm doing a line art. <laughs> Just focusing on trying not to mess up, and yet I still do. <laughs> there we go. I think that's all of it. Now I just have to finish erasing all of the sketch. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Get out of here. We don't need you anymore. All right, now it's time to color using these fancy brush marker thingies. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is color the turtleneck yellow and the dress lilac with a K. So, <laughs> let's color this canary. Gotta remember that these are paint and not markers, so I don't wanna touch where I've already placed the ink. Cause it'll smudge. I really wish I had a red here to mix with this to create like an orange. I think that'd be really helpful for my ideas, <laughs> but I don't have that color. I could just use the purple maybe. So let's uh, tap that a bit. Tap, 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 tap. And create that brown color like that. Then we can go in straight with the purple and color in this dress. This is kind of like counting as our black tone. I'm getting a decently even tone. And if you don't, you can actually go over it and blend those spaces together as long as it hasn't dried yet. Kind of like watercolor. Looks like it's drawing a different color than it's going down. Cause there it's darker than down here. And then I kind of wanted to color these socks that same color. All right, now I'm starting to see the streaks as it dries. Maybe if I zoom in, you can see that. See the color difference between like where I've gone over more than once and where I haven't. I'm trying to figure out what like the benefit of these markers over like a different kind of marker would be. Cause as for right now, I haven't figured that one out. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna end up looking very rainbow barfy. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I'm gonna choose indigo blue. Go over the purple and see if we can get rid of some of those shakes. Now for the hair, I think it'd be cool to be like yellow, apple, turquoise. Should we start at the bottom or the top? Let's start at the top. I just want to use the turquoise. <laughs> All right, so then for the gradient, start at turquoise. Then we grab the apple. We like do one of these just to blend this out until we get straight green again. Maybe even pull a streak or two down to make it look sorta, of, well no because it like bleeds outwards doesn't it? All right, might be time to start turning into the yellow. So we'll grab the yellow, do one of these. Do, 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 do. I don't like tinting them together like this. 
Makes me uncomfortable. Oh, it didn't last quite as long as I expected. Let's just blend that out to the yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. I'm really not all that impressed, to be honest, with these guys. At least not for like illustration. These are probably really cool for calligraphy, which is not something that <laughs> I dabble in too often. If you overwork it too much, the paper starts beating up. Oh no, I just noticed what I did. I put my wrist into the purple and it bled it all around. <laughs> this is gonna be one of those days. <laughs> but I still wanna do this other uh, hair because this was, it was kind of fun even though it doesn't look that great. So basically I'm just kind of using them the way I would use Copic markers. And they actually seem to be working a little better than that, like, dab technique. Okay, for shading, actually take some green. And then take the yellow and blend out the edges. And then from up there, I'll take the turquoise. Right here. And then take apple and blend that out. As long as you get it when they're still wet, they blend pretty well. I did better on that one. I... I think I've determined that these are better if you just blend them while they're still wet than doing that weird like technique where you're like rrr, rrr, like that. <laughs> I think I want to use yellow for these bows up here. Let's give little mouse bunny here a turquoise bow. And maybe both of these two guys there. I'm really disappointed about the ink smudging. But there's not really anything I can do about that. I also wish we had some lighter colors. I have, where did that go? This guy, <laughs> this gray. What does that look like? You can use that to shade. Let's see what happens. Since you have that brush point, you can get those like fine points and that actually looks really cool for adding this little bit of shading here. You can get like fine points and fill in tiny spaces. There we go, there's my little mess. <laughs> My beautiful mess. All in all, I'm really not awfully fond of this art supply. I'm not sure if it's the colors that I got or if it's the actual art supply, but like I would rather use like an alcohol-based marker, like any alcohol-based marker, even my least favorite alcohol-based marker over these pens, just because I'm not sure I'm using them the way they're meant to be used. Like for illustration purposes is what I'm talking about. Now, if I was going to be using these for calligraphy, I do like the stiffness of the brush and like the different size points you can get. Um, but when it comes to illustration, like all the colors that I got at least, they're all like the same tone except for maybe apple and canary are a little bit lighter and then canary is the lightest. But like lilac, sapphire blue, and indigo blue are like almost the exact same tone. And even turquoise is very, very close. So it's hard to use these in an illustration without ending up with like one really dark blob. Um, I tried my best, <laughs> but I forgot how much they smudged and I didn't let each layer dry. So they ended up smudging. The thing that I would compare these most to would be like India ink in a pen. That's not what they say they are, but that kind of is what this is making me think of. It's a little messy. <laughs> So yeah, not my favorite art supply, but I had fun using them and I do enjoy the blending. Um, my crowns, they're always good. I didn't actually use the brush pens, did I? I could darken up some areas here. But I think I did a good job darkening the areas with the actual color. So this is kind of pointless at this point. <laughs> I want to get a close up of uh, all the fingerprints and smudges. There they are. <laughs> I think the best thing to come out of this box were these little bunny mice. I might end up drawing these guys again. <laughs> They're cute. Oh, and then of course I forgot how awesome this is. The Bristol board. Remember when I showed you the um, Crayola signature markers on here? Look how well that pigment holds in this paper. Ugh. This is great paper for that. It's really expensive. So it's cool to have such a big pad of it in the powerful packs. I'd be really interested to see what someone else's idea would be if they used these exact same art supplies because color is something I have a lot of trouble with and the fact that these colors were also similar, I was really nervous. So I kind of think I'm gonna go stalk with social medias and figure out what other people did with this with their powerful packs. 
I will be passing these art supplies on to one of you, so check the link in the description to see if the giveaway is still active. I want to thank you guys all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed uh, watching my process of using a brand new art supply. <laughs> Wait for the layers to dry was the lesson. So <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.